Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can make your own digital blending board using PowerPoint. Now once you see how to do this, you'll realize that it's not very difficult. However, it can be a little time consuming based on the amount of words that you're including on your board. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to show you what it will look like once you've finished making your blending board. Essentially, you're going to be able to project each individual sound to the students and then have them blend it all together. So how do we get here using PowerPoint? I'm going to go ahead and start from a very new presentation so you can see the exact steps that need to be taken in order to do this. So I'm going to get it in frame and the first thing I always do is I go to layout and I select a blank layout. The next thing you're going to want to do is go to a text box here and just click it and then you're going to draw in the text box that you want about this size. So once I do that, then I go to my font and I select the font that I want and I select a very large size. So I do about 200 here. Now I'm going to put my first sound. Oops, there we go. Now that I have my first sound, I'm going to highlight it and then center it here. The next thing I want to do is click on my box and come up here where it says shape outline and I'm going to make sure it has a black outline and then I also like to click it again and make sure that it's pretty thick so I'll do about a three. And the reason why I make sure that the letters are inside a box are because the boxes represent each phony or each sound. So later when I give another example you'll see that easy to have the boxes when you have two letters that are making one sound the kids can see that two letters are making one sound okay so now that my word is in a box I'm gonna click out of it and I'm gonna come and I'm gonna go to the slide here and I'm going to right click it and then I'm going to duplicate this slide so now that the slides duplicated I'm going to click back on my text box and I'm going to copy if you're using a Mac, it's Command C and then Command V, which is copy and paste. Now I'm going to drag this new one just a little bit to leave some space. And now I'm going to come click in it and replace it with the sound that I want. Now whatever sound is my targeted skill for that week, that is the sound that gets highlighted or turned red. So right now I'm working on short A. So I'm going to highlight it and then I'm going to click on the color of the letter and turn it red. Now I don't just do it for a, a vowel. If I was teaching the sound OI, then those would be the red words. If I was teaching a blend, CR, then that would be red. It's whatever my targeted skill is for that week, that is the letter or letters that gets to be red. So then now I come back to my slides over here. I right click it and I duplicate the slide. Now that it's duplicated, I can come back and click my last box that I just did. And again, copy, command C and command B if you're on a Mac. And then just drag it with a little bit of space. It's important to leave that little space because you want the kids to see the individual sounds. Now I'm gonna click inside the box, delete and put the sound. Now T is not my targeted sound. So I'm gonna go ahead, click the color of the letter and I'm gonna click black. So now I have my three individual sounds. I'm gonna go back to my slides. I'm gonna right click it. I'm gonna duplicate it. And this time I'm gonna click on each of my letters, sounds, and I'm gonna push it all the way back so now they're touching. And there's no space between them. And now I'm just using arrows on my keyboard and I'm just pushing it all the way so it looks like it is one whole word. And I can check to make sure there's no gaps. So essentially, it is going to take, if you have a three sounded word, it's gonna take one, two, three, four slides to show that word. So if you go back and now you're just clicking through each slide. Click next slide, next slide, next slide. So four slides for a three sounded word. If you wanna do more words, what I suggest is go back so now I'm going to start my next word. Let's say I want to do cap. I'm going to duplicate it. And now I just have one additional step. Drag it to the bottom. And now I can say, okay, this one's going to be k. Now I'm going to come up here. I'm going to duplicate it. And one extra step, drag it to the bottom. 
So now this is going to be, if I'm trying to build CAC, then really all I have to do now is switch this one. Now I go to slide three, and I'm going to duplicate it, and then I'm going to drag it to the bottom. And now I'm working on CAT, so it needs to be CAT. Now I go to the last one, and I duplicate the slide, and I drag it to the bottom. Whoops, drag it to the bottom. And now I can go in and say this needs to be cat. So now, if I go back, you'll see I have two words done. B, at, bat, k, at, cat, and so forth. So again, it can be a little time consuming because this is just two words. And if I wanted to do around 10 words, you will see that it takes about 40 slides to do 10 words. So that being said though, once you create the first um, PowerPoint, then you can just go ahead and make a copy of this and then it, you can switch it. So if, we're, if I'm doing, say I save this as my short A one, now I wanna go make a short E one. Well, I can just go in and I'll change it to G and then change it to G, E, G. And it's just going, it's just a matter of going in and replacing them. So I just given you an example of, there you go. So then now I'm building my short E one. So that's just to say like, there's a lot of upfront work in creating these, but once you get one done, save yourself time and then copy and make a new presentation and then change it for your sound. You can do this um, for all the sounds. I wanted to point out one of the reasons why we do the boxes is for example, if I wanted to, let's go back to the B. If I wanted to show that I am actually doing the AI sound, the reason why oops, I have the boxes is so that the kids can see that, oh, AI is making one sound, two letters, but one sound. So that's why we do include the boxes around these because it does help the kids visualize the different phonemes that it's not just each letter makes a sound, sometimes one letter or two letters make one sound. So there, that's an example of showing how two letters make one sound. So that's why the boxes are important. So that is it. It's just a matter of setting it up, copy paste, and just a lot of repetition. But again, once it's done, you have that blending board forever, and then you can go through and um, swap out your sounds. You can also add a box if you're doing a four letter, um, a four sounded word. So you just have to play around with it, but that's just the basics. All right, happy teaching and please let me know if you have any other questions on creating these kinds of PowerPoints or phonics videos.